Blender 4.1 is here, and I'm going to go through all of its new geometry nodes. If you've already seen the alpha version of this video, the newest nodes can be found at 420. So, we have seven new nodes, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine nodes with changes. Six of those have been updated with the new rotation socket. These six, which join the updated nodes from 4.0, all now blushing pink in the land of the Quaternion. Okay, next up in our changed nodes list is Set Curve Normal, which now has a free mode. This allows a curve to have custom normals set on it. I'm demonstrating this by instancing a curve line on a curve line, aligning the instances to its normals, which I'm wiggling like there isn't a care in the world. You know what they say, if you love your normals, set them free. The Phil Curve node, not to be mistaken for the Phil Collins node, now has a group ID input, so we can control which curve forms a fill with which. Without the group ID input, Fill Curve will try to fill them all together, creating the worst superhero logo imaginable. But using the index as the group ID, Fill Curve creates three faces, one for each index. Next, the Musgrave Texture node is no more, having been replaced by the Extended Noise Texture node, which makes me nervous because if it starts eating up nodes at an exponential rate, I might have to build a shelter. The Active Camera Input node is going to let us create systems driven by the Active Camera. I'm using Instance on Points to instance a collection of increasingly subdivided Suzannes onto a grid. Then calculating the distance of the camera from each instance, mapping the distance to pick which model is used for each instance. So that the high poly Suzannes, red, are closest to the Active Camera and the low poly lumps purple are far, far away. Changing the active camera automatically shifts the focus of our system. We can even make our Suzanne stare directly at the camera, just like the woman who lives in your walls does at you at 3.33 every morning. Next up on this noodle journey, we have the Bake node. For those who believe that everything is better baked, you can save the evaluations of complex node trees to disk, offloading them so you don't have to be constantly processing them in real time. Which is a bit like how therapy is supposed to work, but I wouldn't know because I'm too busy yelling. Split to instances splits geometry into multiple pieces as defined by the group ID. Here, I'm taking a mesh with 1,500 faces and turning it into one instance. But, if I use index for the group ID, I get 1,500 instances because each face has a unique ID. Split to instances is a very powerful node that can be used to make things like this. I don't really know what it is, but I do know that I really like it. And last, but definitely not least, in this first set of nodes, the Index Switch, which has had something of a hero's welcome round here, and we'll need to look at the original Switch to understand why. Back in the before time, when all there was was the original Switch, we could only switch between two things, true or false. And if we wanted to reflect the fact that the world wasn't indeed governed by such polar opposite absolutes, we'd have to build complex trees like this. 10 additional nodes, just to ask nicely. So that's why the index switch is such a cause for celebration, because you can plug into it as many things as you want, or Blender lets you, and use the index number of those things to switch between them. And those were the Alpha Nodes, a great collection of rectangular marvels which, unlike most self-proclaimed Alphas, don't spend their Saturday nights crying at the gym. But it's been two months since then. A lot can happen in two months. A person can get a stinking head cold for one. And newer nodes, like life, find a way. So then came the menu switch which is like someone has taken the index switch and sent it to college. With it, you can name each switch item like items in a menu. It's not yet mandatory to include the calorie count for each item, 
but when it is, we are all going to be eating a lot less cubes. Next, I'm glad to report that there has been yet further progress in the Great Rotation Project. If you've ever needed to rotate a rotation by a rotation, well now you can with the Rotate Rotation node. The last new node is Sort Elements, and I'm going to use a new Geometry Nodes feature to show you how it works. Now we can see the values of attributes in the viewport with the Attribute Text Viewport Overlay. Through the viewer, we are seeing the index number of each face. Now, when anyone mentions a spreadsheet, you can call them a square. So this Sort node then, it allows you to sort indexes. Here, I'm using a random value for the group ID, randomizing the indexes and bringing unbridled chaos into the world. And finally, there are nodes that we already know and love that are now so much better at what they do. The nominees for best performance improvement by a node are shortest edge paths for being 60% faster, face group boundaries for being over three times faster, extrude mesh which can now be over six times faster for large meshes with many vertex groups, and the winner is edges to face groups, which can now be seven times faster. So here they are, the class of 4.1, a powerful set of new or enhanced nodes primed to serve you. I'll be making an alpha video for Blender 4.2 in early May, so if you enjoyed this video, do like and subscribe, because thanks to all who work so hard, the Blender continuum ever continues, and the way of the noodle is a way of life.